السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, everyone anywhere wherever you are whenever you are in your zone I wish you happy Friday to all of you and may Allah bless all of you and I greet you with the greeting of Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in this blessed day of Friday you know that COVID is surrounding us and uh, is keeping us at home and preventing us from going out even to visit our children, our neighbors, our relatives, and our friends. But we have to carry on working, and we are not going to stop working, and we're not going to be confined to our houses only because of corona. I would like to thank my colleague, uh, Ali Shawa and uh, Mehmet uh, Yusuf for pre making the presentation for all of you. Today I'm going to talk about a good friend of mine or a colleague of mine called Bashkim and uh, the beautiful death. And uh, let us start first by making a definition for what do you mean by death. Death is true reality. It's a true reality that every and each one of us is going to face. Every and each one of us is going to face, whether we are kings, queens, emperors, prime ministers, ministers, wealthy people, healthy people, young, old, anywhere. Anywhere. Fair who died, as we have seen how did Pharaoh die, and others, prophets, these people of them died, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu died, and everyone died. Animals, birds, and everything. The only, even the angel of death will die. The angel of death, whom Allah appointed him to take the life of every creation of him, will die. The only one who is going to die is Allah Almighty, al Hay, al ladhi la This is death for us. So death for us is an ultimate and true reality. Nobody can escape it. You cannot buy your life and you cannot prevent the angel of death from coming to you or to myself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kulli nafsin maut. Every living soul will taste. You know, taste when you eat something, you make a taste. You taste the thing as if each one of us, if each one of us will be cooking his meal in his life and during the time when the angel is coming to take his or her soul, he or she would be tasting what meal she cooked for herself during her life. Was well, a very well cooked meal, tasty meal, rotten meal, poisonous meal, or whatever it is. So this is how every soul has to taste death. It's on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring every creation of him and put them in one line to see their deeds and to judge them. Audio, video, tri-dimensional tri video, five-dimensional, seven-dimensional, we don't know. Because we're using on, on this planet the three dimension. But maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have got different dimensions of our videos. So nothing will be uh, not recorded. Everything will be recorded and I will see my account before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever amongst us will be pushed to the right or to the left or to above or down or forward or backward from the cliff of the, the, the edge of the cliff which will throw me into the fire, I'll be victorious and going to heaven. If this kind of few meters to the left, right, up, down or front or back will be done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by the angels, this will be savior for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the same ayah in Surah Al-Imran, this lively, lively living or this worldly life is illusionary. Illusion. It's not true. It's not reality. Illusionary enjoyment. So this is reality. And today we are talking about one of our dearest brothers, young man, at the age of 39, leaving behind a widow and a young, a young, a young uh, orphan at the age of 11. 
Fresh Kim, you can see, please join to see the uh, photographs and the, the, the lighting as well. Can we, Sharah, uh, Muhammad? 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 Can you move the slides, please? Hello? Is something wrong with the slide? Hello? Something wrong with the slide. Oh, thank you, Muhammad. Uh, why are you talking about this at this current time? People might say that me, as an individual, keep talking about civil society, about charity, about humanitarian work, about relief, about development, about capacity building. So, why should we be talking about? Uh, six reasons, as you can see them on the slide. First one, the more we see of COVID surrounding us and claiming the life of as many people as we see every day. This is number one. Number one is because of COVID. Number two, the more we see of what we call it nowadays, the sudden, and the Prophet Sallallahu in the good old days, more than 1400 years ago, was, was prophesizing that one of the smallest signs of the day of judgment is a sudden death. Sudden death will happen to healthy people, young people, without any cause, without any reason. And this is what becoming a phenomenon nowadays among his athlete and among his football player, among his TV presenter and others. This is number two. Number three, the more we see of natural disasters, natural disasters, conflicts, uh, armed conflicts, uh, Displacement of people, people becoming refugees, and all this kind of earthquakes in Amazons, far in Australia, far in Africa, and all these kind of things, which claiming a lot of life, not only of human being, but of other creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Like in the fire was in Australia, claimed the life of more than five hundred thousand uh, creature, animals, birds, and others. You see more of this. Actually, in different parts of the world, the, the uh, number four is the spread of different pandemics. Now we are surrounded by COVID, but in the past it was uh, what you call it uh, Ebo Ebola, it was SARS, it was swine fever, it was uh, a bird's flu, it's, it's others. All these claiming the lives of people by the hours. Number five is the environmental pollution, which is leading into climate change, uh, rising in the temperature, and all this kind of disasters affecting people like flooding and other things as well. The last and not least is the death of our brother Bashkim. So six points made me to talk today about death, in spite of the fact it's not my speciality. You might say this, you need to get a sheikh, you need to get an imam, you need to get a priest, you need to get a vicar, you need to get a scholar to talk about death. But I'm talking because I have been observing it from the social, humanitarian, as well as uh, religion, uh, as well as developmental point of view. Actually, I'm talking about it today. Uh, this is another image of uh, Bashkim with his colleagues. I think this was in Bosnia in the early 2000. I can't remember what name. And you can see people from Bosnia, from Albania, uh, from Kosovo uh, in this image. 
and all of them of them young energetic dedicated committed individuals working for humanity from you know humanitarian work and humanitarian field god bless all of them when i was attending the condolence of bashkim last week last tuesday not this tuesday tuesday gone I found more than 130 people came like that. And the spirit in the room, the value of the discussion of the room, the wording, the love, and the uh, intimacy, and the affection of the individual in the room were incredible. I was comparing it to another meeting I attended one week before that, were actually top class people, Yani, chair of the organization, other were there, the atmosphere and the culture were not the same. That's why while I was listening to the people whom they loved, which came dearly talking about him, I started to write some points about the beautiful side of the death, which came through the spirit, the beautiful spirit of brother Bashkim Rahmatullah Ali. And this is why I'm talking to you today about him as a phenomena, not him as an individual. When you have somebody who's been loved by many people, you know, in the room, it was people from different parts in Africa, from Pakistan, from England, from Germany, uh, from Bosnia, from Kosovo, from uh, uh, Albania, from other, other countries, came, all of them, speaking different languages. But the, but the phenomena was, it is a love and the affection and this kind of sentimental relationship between them and this beautiful soul, and this beautiful soul of great brother Bashkim. You can see in this image one of Bashkim and one of his colleague, and this some of the beautiful wording came to me while I was listening to everyone else in the room. This is living, yes, we are going to be transforming our life from this life to another life. Life in the grave, life in Barzakh, then another eternal life before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will become life for all of us. Now we are living above earth. When we die, we live under earth. Then we'll be on the Barzakh before we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is resting, resting to the soul who spent its life to try to comfort the souls of others, who tried to let others rest. And this was the character of Brother Bashkim. This is peace. When you live your life and you try to bring peace to everybody around you, whether the family members or whether people in different countries that you work for, as I mentioned, very, 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 very difficult countries to work in Kosovo, in Bosnia, in Albania, in, uh, in, in China, in uh, Yemen, in Syria, and others. You bring this to those people, this will be a peaceful transformation of your life when we meet Allah. This is serenity as well. You becoming, oh, you're becoming relaxed. You know serenity? In your heart, tamanina. You know this serenity? It's not given to anyone unless you provide it to other people who need it more in the camps, who need it more in the displacement area, who needs this more because of their sicknesses. Tranquility. It's also the meeting. You meet whom you'd like to meet as this happened to Hazrat Bilal, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu And uh, when he was dying, his wife was crying, was weeping, my husband, my husband, my husband. And I said to her, woman, don't cry. Tomorrow I'm going to meet, meet, oh, the most beloved one, like Abashkim did, to meet the most beloved one, Muhammad and his companions. It's a day of joy, a joy because you have seen the result of what you have done in your life. It's a day of eternity, no going back. No going back, no going back. Life forever in heaven, inshallah, for Bashkim, 
or life forever in different places, not for Bashkim. It's a success. When people prepare themselves for the final exam and go to the exam, those people will see the result when the angel of death come to them and say, take your book by your right hand. Bashkim was, inshallah, awla ameen. Whoever listening to me has to say ameen. Ghayar, uh, ya Muhammad. This also is excellence, a process of excellence, where uh, no, 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 no. Uh, can you bring, uh, I don't know what's this, what is this, images? And bring back uh, the down before that. Down before that. Down before that. Down before that. What's what's this? Down before that, uh, brother. Somebody's trying to spoil the talk or what? Okay, this is excellence, as, as I mentioned, you excel for people, you will see the result. Uh, uh, this is the companionship, as I mentioned, that uh, Hazra Blal was talking to. Uh, his wife and say this has been the companionship of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is satisfaction. You will be satisfied to see the result of what you have been offering to others during your life and this is closeness to the people you like. Sometimes people might say that I would love to be with my president, I would like to be with my prime minister, I would love to be with my superhero star, maybe football player, maybe a cinema star, movie star and others, but actually if you love to be with the Prophet and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the this is the closeness that you want to have. And Bashkim was one of those people, Rahmatullah Ali. This is satisfaction as well. Satisfaction of what you have been doing and offering to others. Actually, look at we need to look at what you have been offering for others during our life before we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the choice. I give you two stories in the choice. One story is about a sheikh called Sheikh Kishk, Rahmatullah Ali, who was very known, very well known sheikh in Egypt, and he uh, was uh, making a dua for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to die uh, uh, a certain death, and uh, for the last few years of his life, and he was making all this dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, actually to die. And he was asking his colleague, who didn't go to make Hajj or Umrah in Saudi Arabia, to ask Allah to accept the dua of Sheikh Kesh. One of them said, well, no, I'm not going to say this dua for you in Mecca or Medina unless you tell me what is the dua. The dua of Sheikh Kesh was, please Allah, let me die on the day of Friday on the stage of sujood when I was putting my head down praying for yourself. On, on that day, on that day, Sheikh Kesh had his uh, bath, shower, and went to do the two rak'ah sunnah before going to the mosque. And on the second rak'ah, while he was making sujood, <coughs> his wife came to him, and she was asking him to hurry up because of Juma once, twice, three, four times, but he never got up, and she found him dead, and Allah accepted the way he wanted to die. So death for him was a choice. He chose in this death. Another story, which I'll say for some Sahabi called Anas ibn Nadr, in the battlefield of uh, Uhud, he attended it because he did not attend the battlefield of Badr. And he said, if Allah will let me to live to attend another battlefield, I will show Allah and they will show all the Muslims what can I do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the battlefield of Badr, uh, uh, there was a rumor that the Prophet has been killed. So Anas ibn Nadr stood up and 
was making a big statement to every companion of the Prophet Sallallahu let us to die on the way that the Prophet Sallallahu died for, and I can smell the smell, the fragrance of heaven from behind the mountain of Uhud. And he ran away to fight the enemies of Allah and the enemies of the believers. And when they found his body, they found at least 80 wounds, fractures, cuts in his body at that time. So he chosen the way he wanted to die. So this is a choice by you. The one who would like to be with the king, be with the king. The one who would like to be with the Lord of kings, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be with him. The one who would like to be with the uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his like, like Hazrat Prophet, uh, Hazrat Blair, uh, uh, be with him. And this is satisfaction, as I said, and this is the ultimate truth, as I mentioned. See, all this wording came to me by listening to the brothers and sisters of the Bashkim from different parts of the world are condoling him and praising him. This is a resurrection because this is a small resurrection before the ultimate resurrection at the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 bless his soul. Uh, no, uh, still, still, bring it back, Muhammad. Muhammad, uh, Resurrection, reward. You see your reward before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see your reward before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see your reward, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is giving. What you give in life, Allah will give you back. What you offer in life, offer back. What you provide in life, Allah will give you provision back. So you cannot give something to the people who need your help and Allah does not give you back a multiple of this. Next, please. This also is love. You know, it's a, it's, it's a status of love to the people who love to be with the Lord who created love and humanity. And I hope that each and every one of us, especially you young people, to love to be with the good people who can remind you of how to help everywhere, anywhere, anybody. This is affection and, and, and love. You saw this kind, you see, you have this kind of inner feeling inside your heart that you would love to go through this process because you are attracted to the life to come. Uh, this is aroma as well, or a fragrance. And in this, I'll give you another story. The story of the uh, hairdresser was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh was the king of Egypt or the lord of Egypt. Or the, he made himself to be the lord of Egypt. And uh, she, while, while she was combing her, her hair, you know, I'm combing like this. I don't have hair, but she used to have hair. And uh, the the comb fell down, and she uh, her, the, the, the the servant was saying something with the Lord of Moses. So uh, the daughter of Pharaoh, uh, this is Yemen. If you can look at this image, in Yemen was actually make a dua for Yemen now, brothers and sisters, that Allah will make give peace and tranquility and safety to Yemen. And they can see brother Wahbi there and some of the brothers from different countries are there in Yemen. I don't know the names, but actually from Egypt, from uh, Bosnia, from other countries as well, from Pakistan and others. Uh, so she told her, uh, the, daughter of, uh, the daughter of Pharaoh, isn't my father, is your Lord said, no, no, he's not my Lord. My Lord is the Lord of Moses, alayhi salam. She went to tell her father, and her father got this woman with her children, and told her, who is your Lord? She said, the Lord of Moses. Said, I am your Lord. She said, no, you are not your Lord. Said, if you don't believe in me, you know, this boiling oil, I will throw your children one by one in the boiling oil if you don't believe in me. She didn't care because the ultimate belief in her heart was surpassing the, the tyranny of, the, of Pharaoh himself. And he's thrown. All the children, one by one, by one, until the last one, which was a baby. She went to tell him, please, can I ask you a request? She so he thought that she would change her mind. She said, what? Say whatever you want. She said, when you throw me, 
and my baby into the boiling oil. Please collect my bones with the bones of my children and put them in one grave. He said, I will do that. And he throw her with her actually uh, sons. Then while the Prophet ﷺ was ascending in the story of Mi'raj, he smelled this beautiful smell or fragrance in one of the heavens. And he was asking Jibreel السلام, what is this beautiful smell? This is the smell coming from the grave of the uh, hairdresser or the who was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh. So for hair, uh, death was aroma. You see, this kind of beautiful smell you smell when you actually go and bypass these graves of the great people. It's jihad. This is jihad in dunya, and Allah will reward you to get the reward in, in akhirah. This is patience as well. Patient on sickness, like Brother Bashkim was sick and has cancer. Then he had, he had, uh, he had what you call it, uh, uh, corona. Then he had chest infection and, and all these sort of things to pass through it with patience and with acceptance and with actually this kind of serenity in his heart. And they gave you another story of patience where the believer of uh, the Surah Yasin who was trying to defend the messengers who came to his village. And the villagers or the tyrants in the village refused him. You know what they have done to him? And he was very patient. You know what they have done to him? One story say they throw him into a boiling oil. A second story said that they actually burned him alive. A third story said that actually they stood on his uh, abdomen and keep pressurizing it till his intestine came from out from his mouth and his back uh, side. But then when he died, he did for his people. He was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. So he took all this punishment with patience to, to stand up, then actually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. Then Allah actually did not punish them later on. It's a wish. All these beautiful things came because of you. You inspired me to write all this talk in the remembrance of Bashkim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rahmatullah alayhi. The attractiveness will be attracted to the people you are going to live with them in the life to come. And it's familiar. It will be familiar for you. You're not going to be scared of the angel of this because the angel of this will come to you in a very big way not scaring you like he goes to take the life of those bad people who used to torture and kill we have seen this in happening in bosnia if, if some bosnian sisters and brothers are there by what happened in 1992 93 94 95 unfortunately at that time <sighs> This also is a breaking through your life to a better life. You make it yourself because you manage to unlock your life and to go to realize that you can live in peace and serenity and tranquility in the other life. A youthfulness. And in this, there's a story about an old woman came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she was asking him, can I go to heaven? He said, no, it's an old woman, don't go to heaven. She was crying. He was trying to make, yani, to laugh with her, to make a joke with her. He said, come back, woman, come back, woman. Don't worry, because when you go to heaven, you'll be as young as ever. You cannot go as an old woman. And we all know that when each one of you, inshallah, say, I mean, go to heaven, you will be at the age of Jesus, peace be upon him. You will be at the beauty and handsomeness of Yusuf, alayhi salam, and you will be at the height and the body of Adam alayhi salam. So be at the age of 33, be the height of 40 meters high, 60 arm length, and the handsomeness and beauty of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. This is how. And even for the young, uh, for, for the woman, actually, would be more beautiful than Hur al -Ain. And when any one of them will look from heaven onto earth, the light, the glare of light coming from her face and from her hijab in heaven will enlighten 
the whole earth will be stronger than the light coming from the sun rays itself. It's usefulness. This is, is beauty as well, because Allah makes you beautiful, young woman and young men, because this is a time when everybody will be rewarded what they have been planting. See, you plant in your life, you harvest in the life to come. You plant in your life, you harvest in the life to come. And when Allah tests you with this hardship, like what he did to Bashkim, to Bashkim, uh, may Allah bless his soul, uh, he harvested his life, inshallah, ameen, ameen, ameen. This is energy. Also, this comes, you know, when the, when, when the martyrs die and Allah accepts the martyrdom, Allah will put their souls in the belly of a green bird's flying throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because of these souls felt the, the reward or the might of the reward given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have the energy to ask Allah, please Allah send us back to work for your cause, to make jihad for your cause and do it again and again and again. I said, no, enough is enough. And this is a request. You see, all 43 points I wrote while I was listening to you last week talking about our brother Bashkim, may Allah bless his soul, and make him to listen to me now and make him, you know what, if you, if you can visualize the people who are actually watching on Facebook, the people on Zoom and other people, see how many countries you are watching from different places and how many angels are watching you because your angel will be listening to what I'm talking to you about. Maybe thousands and thousands and thousands of angels are listening and watching with you and other creation of Allah SWT. This is the unseen, hidden world that Allah SWT created it for you. So each one of you with his, her, his angel and their angel will be listening and following them. It's a request, it's a worship, it's a submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It's a pride. When we die, actually, will feel the honor and the pride from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us because we'll be dignified. Because of what? Because of what we've been doing in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your life all, all your life. Sharaih, uh, Muhammad. Muhammad. Uh, as honor, this is glaring, as I mentioned before. This is wideness. When the people will be in the grave, you know, there's a hadith about Prophet that actually the grave will compress the body of any dead body. But the good people, like Bashkim, Allah will widen their graves and to let them to look from the window inside the grave to see their place in heaven and to ask Allah to hurry up for the day of judgment so they can join the beloved ones in heaven and they can go to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. His glaring, his wideness, his power, if because the power is given to the soul. The body decays, but the soul does not decay. The continuity after life, lucidity and beautiful dream. It's a beautiful dream for some people. You know, uh, there's a lot of atrocity happening nowadays in Kashmir with the Uyghur people in China, with the Hunga people in uh, Myanmar. When in Syria, in Yemen, happened as well to the Azidi people in, in Iraq by the Daesh, the Daesh, which had nothing to do with Islam. I'm just declaring it, but don't come and fool me and tell, that, tell me, tell me my name is Hani al-Banna, that Daesh is representing Islam. No, and what they have done to the Azidi is nothing to do with Islam, and it's an act of terrorism and the act of uh, barbarism in our and the people in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, will actually 
uh, there, the tortured South Sudan, uh, in North uh, Nigeria, in uh, what do you call it, uh, the Central African Republic, and others, others, and others in Gaza, as you can see it day in and day out, and others. So all these people actually, there's a beautiful dream for them. When they die, Allah rest their peace in peace, rest their souls in peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give them uh, this kind of peace, actually, when they have to see the dream become reality when they meet with him. Uh, uh, this is another group you can see, Bismillah, mashallah, all the young people make the history for all of us. And Bashkim was one of them, the one that bred in the front line. And Wahbi as well is, is consistent everywhere. You can see him there. And different people from the, those people love the man of no relationship. You see, Al Akhilao Yam Eden Baduhan Bad Nadu, those friends in life on the day of judgment, they could be enemies to one another. Because their friendship or brotherhood were not based on piety. The only people who will be friends on the day of judgment are the most pious people. They're not going to blame one another because during their life, those pious people were reminding themselves and others by the good relation between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the service they offer to humanity. Also some definition here is the, uh, the message. This is a message of the living. And you are living like I'm living. It's a message to deliver to every living people, to try to save every living creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a message from you. So this is a message. Remind people before they die to fulfill their duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, this is a task also. Task for by whom? By the most pious individual who are trying to save humanity like each and every one of you. Like each and every one of you. And it's a vision for whom? For the joyful one, the, the people who can see the joy and the source of joy which is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is their vision because they can see it. Masdar Sa'ada Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The source of joyfulness, the source of happiness as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a comfort for those brothers or those sisters who. Uh, make the brotherhood or sisterhood based on piety, inshallah. This is some of the definition which came to me when I was actually uh, uh, listening to how people used to love uh, Bashkim at the time, talk about him. This is another lady that we, Sister uh, Nuzhat, that actually we lost uh, this week, unfortunately. She had she have been working, working tirelessly for more than 30 years in the UK and in the West. To try to teach young children, young women, young people to travel, to get da'wah, and, 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 and also she died, unfortunately, uh, like Brother Bashkim, everybody loved Sister Nuzhat, and you have loved uh, Brother Bashkim as well. So I'm just putting her name, her, her, her image for you to make a dua for her as well as you make a dua for Brother Bashkim. Every one of us will be dead. Even the Prophet Sallallahu even the angels, everybody, 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 but the only one who's not going to die is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, and you can see this beautiful, I'm not sure this is from Bosnia or from, I can't, it's from the mountain in Bosnia. يعني it looks like it. ولكل أمة أجل فإذا جاء أجلهم ليس أخونا ساعة أخرى. Every nation of Allah, every creation of Allah, every group of creation of Allah has a certain time to live on earth. Then by that, they go to meet them. But when the hour comes, when the hour comes, nobody can delay it for a second or bring it forward for a second. When, the, when this kind of uh, agony of this come to me and others, 
it brings the truth, the true reality to me and all of us. Okay? And this is have been we've been told about it, but we were denying the, the illusionary living life on earth was taking us away from the reality of meeting Allah at any time. So may Allah bless the soul of our brother Bashkim and all our dead uh, beloved colleagues, friends, and family members, and everyone else. And I thank everybody who was there last week, not this Tuesday, last Tuesday, who inspired me to make this talk, especially to uh, look at uh, credibility, integrity, and to honor the soul and the spirit of Brother Bashkim. وجزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if somebody uh, from the people who are actually in Bosnia and others they would like to say something. Um, Muhammad, you, you you unmute. Because I found some people from from Bosnia. Or from Kosovo. No. Is it working? Assalamu alaikum. Who is this? Vahabi uh, from Kosovo. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Go on, Vahabi. Jazakallah, mm -hmm. for your presentation and also for honoring the 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 name and the, the good deeds of our beloved brother Bashkim. You know, I had the opportunity to work with him uh, maybe around two decades, maybe less, less, less than that. Although he was employed by RW, he still remained here in Kosovo. He worked from here, and uh, we we met regularly with him. And uh, definitely, it's uh, very hard for me to to say, you know, something. But definitely, what I said on my presentation of that time, when I received all the messages from all the people who has known me, and they they knew that I'm close to Bashkin. I received a lot of messages through WhatsApp, on LinkedIn, through through other emails or something, and definitely some strange thinking in my mind that I said I I, I wish I, I was in his place at that time. You know, this strange thinking came, came to my, to my mind, uh, definitely at that, that that place. And I think I think this is a good sign for our beloved brother Bashkin that Allah has loved him and uh, secured inshallah the. A good place for him in Jannah. Anybody else would like to make a comment? I usually don't open the, don't unmute on the live stream, but because of you, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless him and also bless Sister Nuzhat from UK who died this week as well. And bless the soul of each and every one of us, inshallah. Anybody else? Muhammad? No, if there's nobody else would like to make a statement, then we can say, Jazakumullah khair, Jum'a Mubarakah, and we'll see you, inshallah, uh, next week. we we'll do this kind of talk Tuesday in Arabic and Friday in English, same time. Different subject, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.